nine different 3D printers, 11 3D benches from 11 different filaments. Let's find out which ones suck the most. There you are, welcome back. As you can see, the studio is in a bit of dis, uh, dishevel? Dis, is that a word, dishevel? Disarray. Disarray, it's crazy. We ran nine different machines with 11 different filaments. Pooch was up here doing a, a stream. He built this rep box right here, and then the challenge was to fill it full of filament and then print a bunch of benchies on as many extruders as there were rolls of filament. It fits 11 of the skinny rolls, and so we got 11 extruders via nine different 3D printers. Up top, you've got Prusa Minis. Below us, you've got CraftBot Flow IDEX XL machines. And over there, let's see if I can do it from memory. Ready? Top left is the Kaiwu 3D Tycoon. Top right is the Ender 3 Pro. Below the Kaiwu, is it, is it the CR6SE? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then next to that is the Prusa i3 Mark III. And then next to that is the Artillery 3D Sidewinder X1. Fantastic. You got it. You wow, it. not bad. All of these machines that we used are stock for the most part, except for the craft bots. They are running a beta firmware, which hopefully makes the right extruder perform better. Right extruder. I got it. You did it. And then the Sidewinder, if I remember right, has an Olsen Ruby 0.6 millimeter nozzle on it. So there we go. And the goal of this was to have each machine print to success a thing, and why not be a 3D Benchy? We're gonna go over what they look like, and I want you to tell me which one is the worst. Is the worst, absolute worst. We're gonna start with the Prusa Minis right up top. So the first one is a Prusa Mini and it was printing with Repcord's uh, white filament. Maybe he calls it vanilla, I'm not sure. But have a look at that. This, this, I mean, uh, it, looks, it looks okay. It looks okay from here. The problem is when you cast a certain light on it, you can see that the bow is having issues. Look at that. I don't know what's going on there. I must, I got to tell you though, the Prusa machines do come with media that has a pre-sliced benchy as an example model, and this is one of the pre-sliced benchies. I don't know if it's optimized for a certain filament, but this filament it is not, not optimized for. It's a tongue twister. Mini number two. This is almost, uh, well this is purple. Sean likes this. I love it. It's hard to tell detail on something like this. Um, it, it doesn't look like the bow is suffering from the same fate. Uh, even, even under certain lighting conditions that are meant to highlight layer inconsistencies, this still looks really cool. I do like uh, seeing the infill through it. I think that looks kind of cool. Do you like that? I love that, yeah. That's it's, pretty it's cool. cool. It's purple, it's a, you like purple. It's a cool effect. That's more like pink, but we'll, we'll, we'll give it to you. It's pinkle. Magenta? Sure. T-Mobile colors. Sponsor me. Uh, next up is the craft bots. Let, there's, each one of those is a dual extruder and each was uh, printing in dual mode. So there's four to take a look at. Let's do it. These are benchies and uh, these are removable flexible steel sheets, just kind of like the Prusa Minis and the Mark III. And that's it. Yeah, yeah, but I mean they're benchies. They pop off, ready, ready? Ooh. Nice. <laughs> Would you look at these? Wow. So with the CraftBot, like I said, this is the Flow IDEX XL. One was the first one and one is the second one they sent. It is running beta firmware, which I was told fixes issues with the right extruder. And uh, let's see if we're, they're facing this way, so this way. So these are left extruder, these are right extruder, and we'll do that. So this is CraftBot on the left. Bow looks good. Uh, there's a little mess up right there, just a little bit, kind of a bed adhesion issue or par uh, could be possible that the nozzle wasn't primed properly. Uh, I can't, if I'm looking at this in the light, it's looking like there's a little bit of weird layering right there. Can you see that in your camera? I think so. Okay. Smokestack looks good. Words in the back look okay. Sidewalls, everything looks proper. Everything looks proper. I'm going to put that one back. Okay. So this is from the right extruder on the left craft bot. You can kind of see the infill through there. Oh yeah. It must be a cubic pattern. Letters on the bottom. 
Ooh, it looks good. It's almost glassy. Can you see that? Yeah, that I shine? like that. Yeah, it's a nice little That's sheen. That's really good. Bow looks better to me. The bow looks better here than it did on the left extruder. Uh, smokestack looks good. Uh, I would say this looks okay. Here is left extruder, second craft bot. Oh, look at that. Some stringing. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's a little bit of stringing right there. Uh, the, bow, the bow is exquisite, except for this little part right there. I don't know if that's a layer skip or just an inconsistent extrusion or a cooling artifact, but it does encompass the entirety of the model. Other than, I mean, the sidewalls look good, except for that one little, little, that layer right there. Yep. Okay, smokestack looks good. Um, words on the back look good. Ooh, letters on the bottom, look at that. Those look good. Nice. Those are really good. Okay, so stringing that thing right there. Uh, but other than that, I mean, be curious to take a heat gun to that. Whew, getting a lot of benchies out. Chris Riley must be jealous. Right extruder, second craft bot. Oh, look at that. That thing that we saw on the first one is also on this one, so something must have happened. You see that right there? I see it, yeah. Okay. The letters look fine on the bottom. Oh, yeah. Those look good. Other than that inconsistency there, uh, the bow of the boat looks pretty good. Uh, I like these, the, the walls here, they look good. Smokestack looks good. Not as much stringing, so there we go. Okay, boy. Look at all these benchies. A lot of benchies. So Sean, what's next? Which one should we grab? You thinking the, the Kaiwu maybe? Yeah, let's go to the Kaiwu. Let's go to the Kaiwu. Nice. Also on this one, just cause I wasn't sure, I created a profile from scratch. Uh, I put a whole bunch of skirt lines just because I wanted it to uh, prime the nozzle. But dude, feel it, feel this. That's good. Yeah, that's nice. That's good. Oh man, we're gonna run out of room. Yeah. <laughs> so with the Kaiwu 3D Tycoon, uh, it didn't come with a slicer or slicer settings, but the G code on the SD card said uh, configured in Simplify 3D, which allows you to import G code it creates to create a profile. And so that's what I did. And then I adjusted the number of uh, skirt lines. So that's what we have right here. This was printing it at 200 degrees C. Pooch did say this is a little bit cold for his filament. I'm wondering if a little bit of heat would have made the side quality a little bit better. Also, these are uh, retraction points, I believe, and those are little holes in the bow of the boat. Oh, I see. Lettering, though, look at that. That's good, right? Yeah, looks great. That it's got a little bit of an elephant's foot, so it looks like the nozzle was maybe a little bit too close to the bed. Oh, yeah, I see it. Just a little bit. There's a weird texture, or a weird, I don't know how to describe it. I think it's, it's super matte in color, and I think it's because it was printing at a lower temperature. The features of the Benchy are correct, and you know, all things considered, uh, the Kaiwu 3D did finish first. It was printing crazy fast. But if you uh, if you take a look, do you, do you see all the the chunkiness to those layers there? Oh yeah. I'm wondering what would happen if we did a Benchy in the same filament, but we upped the temp by 15 C just to see. We might have to try that. But anyway, this is the Kaiwu 3D Tycoon Benchy right there. Yeah. Next up, Ender 3 Pro. Let's do it. <laughs> the skirt lines are not together, so I may not have had the nozzle at the right height. It'll be interesting to see once we get it back what the bottom looks like. The bench is hovering. Uh, this is what I was afraid of. So have a look at the bottom. You can tell that the material wasn't close enough to the bed, and so you get something that looks like that. Well, unfortunately, well. but but look, but then there's some extra little giblets right there. Oh, and look at oh, look at this. You know, I wonder, I wonder if I didn't clear all the filament out because look at the difference in color: dark blue, light blue. Oh, what'd you do? I, I may not have purged enough filament out of the nozzle to get all the old stuff out because I'm I was running. It, it could have been high five blue before, and mm -hmm. that's really heavy in the pigment, and so it could have yeah could have carried definitely over. Definitely different. Super different. Bow of the boat looks good. I like that on both sides. Uh, lettering, oops. oops. <laughs> so even though the lettering looks like that, it is correct in form. It just doesn't look very good. Sidewalls look um, decent. Decent. I would say these are these are decent. Uh, smokestack looks good. 
I can read the words on the back. Okay. A little bit of stringing, just a little bit. Just a tiny, tiny bit right there. Mm -hmm. But there we go, that's quite a fleet. Next, uh, oh, you know what? CR6 SE. If you're watching the stream, I had a heck of a time getting Creality Slicer to load on the laptop. I rebooted a few times, uh, and it's just Cura 421, but the processes just kind of hung out and didn't do much. Darn it anyway. But this is the uh, CR6 SE with auto leveling. So have a look. You can see some of the texture of the build plate in there. Do you see that? Yeah. Does it kind of shine? A little yeah. bit. Okay. It's got the, the standard lettering. It looks like it was a decent height. Okay, so when we go here, we can see the retraction points. The bow looks pretty good. It looks like there's a line right here. I don't know what that correlates to, but I can kind of see it. Spinning it around. Uh, looks like it's got a little bit of an elephant's foot right there. Bow of the boat looks pretty good. I'd say that's consistent. Smokestack looks good. This is, what is this? That's a sidewall. Um, layers aren't too chunky there. I kind of like that. Top layers are good. Okay. I don't see stringiness. Do you see strings? I don't, see, I don't, see, I don't see any strings. Okay. Well, then that's a decent benchy right there. Next. Oh, it just fell right off. Is this the same? <gasps> it's the same. I guess Pooch didn't have 11 colors. <laughs> Pooch. Pooch, look at that. It's the same color. What? I thought we were uh, doing different colors. This is the Prusa Mark III. This is pre-sliced G-code. And, uh, oh, look at look at the texture there from the build plate. I love it. That is fun. Is that a king build plate? That is the king, yeah. It's like every letter repeats itself, right? Yeah. Sidewalls look good. The uh, bow of the boat looks good. I don't see chunky layers there. Uh, these look decent, I'd say. These sidewalls right here. Top layers look exquisite. Roof is good. Smokestack is good. Uh, the the, the portholes are circles. It's good. Letters in the back, I can read. Again, this was pre-sliced, so it better be good, right? Last, and certainly not least, is the one from the Sidewinder X1. You missed it. <laughs> it's right there. Yeah. The Benchy is designed to print with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, two perimeters, and 10% infill. That was just a kind of a way of saying, print this out with these settings so you can compare it to other machines and other people's prints that are similar or the same. This doesn't follow that convention. This is a 0.6 millimeter nozzle. Also, uh, this machine and all these machines, I mean, some of them had been off for a year or more. <laughs> so not too bad. If we take a look at this, uh, this is G-code that I sliced at the time of the review of the Sidewinder X1. So. Uh, lettering, is, ooh, lettering isn't as good. So it looks like the nozzle was probably a little too close to the bed for the extrusion width. Mm. I don't see an elephant's foot, but I can see, if you look at the bow of the boat, look at that line, see how it kind of dives in right there? Yeah. So it's either, it couldn't dissip the, the filament couldn't dissipate the heat fast enough or cooling wasn't enough. And my guess is with a wider extrusion, could dissipate, could dissipate the heat enough. Right. That's my guess. That's my guess. Sidewalls look freaking great. Look at that. That's, that's fantastic there. Portholes are circles. That's a big old circle. I don't see, oh, I see one string, just one. Do you see that? Barely. Is that even, or is that just a reflection? Oh wait, there it is. It's super tiny and it's gone. <laughs> All right. Okay, well, Still though, uh, there are some issues with this Benchy, but I would say it's super close to being really good. So we can add this to the collection. There we go, we've done it. We've successfully recovered 11 Benchies from nine different 3D printers using 11 different filaments. Well, 10 different filaments. I mean, pooch, come on. But seriously, we had fun putting together the wrap box and doing this all on stream. I'm really happy we were able to get some results, but now it's up to you. There are 11 benches to choose from, and I want you to tell me which one is the worst. I don't want you to pick the best. I want you to pick the worst. Which one of these sucks the most? We've got Prusa Mini 1, Prusa Mini 2, 
craft bot left extruder one, craft bot right extruder one, craft bot two left extruder, craft bot two right extruder, Kaiwu 3D Tycoon, oh, did I miss it? Oh, uh, uh, Ender 3 Pro, <laughs> CR6 SE with the 8 bit board. Mark uh, Prusa i3 Mark III, and this is G-code from the machine, and this one is a Sidewinder, or an Artillery 3D Sidewinder X1 with a 0.6 millimeter Olsen Ruby nozzle. Bam! Nailed it. Which one of these is the worst, and why? Put it in the comments. I'd love to hear it. And uh, whichever one is voted the worst, I'm gonna send it to, there was uh, someone who bought it. Liam from the stream threw a bunch of donation my way because he wanted himself the worst Benchy of the bunch. And I'm having a hard time picking, so I'd like you to pick which Benchy sucks the most. <laughs> Leave it down in the comments. If you see someone picking one that's worse though, upvote theirs, we'll figure out a way to do it, but whichever one is in the comments the most, that's the one I'm gonna send to Liam. Well, I hope you saw that stream. If you didn't, what we attempt to do is stream lots of fun, cool things on Wednesdays. I look forward to seeing you on Wednesday streams when they happen, I'll do my best to pre-schedule them, just look out for it. To be notified, obviously, be subscribed and ring that bell and turn on notifications and do all that crap that YouTube makes you do when you wanna be notified about something. But listen, this was a lot of fun. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks a lot, hug each other more from a safe distance. High five. There, there we go. go. Yeah, nice. I really wanted to go, wham! You should have. You just should have done that. I would have been really mad at you, but you should have. <laughs> <sighs> so oh. I'm going to push him that way and then back, right? Oh, like pull one back and pull one forward. Like, so oh. pull it back. Pull it back. And then put one in the same spot.